greatest show in fantasy football history, hosted by the incomparable Scott Connor and the one and only Ray GQ. I present to you Destination Chill, where football and fantasy collide. G E G P, welcome in. It is Sunday night, April 7th, 2024. Y'all decided to tap in with myself, and y'all know who it is, man. My co host. My dog, my friend, my business partner, my brother from another mother, Scott Connor. You can find him on X at Charles Chill FFB. You can get at me at Ray GQ, Destination Chill, the place where we come every Sunday night to hang out with y'all, chill, relax, talk some football. A lot to talk about, Scott. We are a mere few days away from the 2024 NFL Draft. My friend, I know you're excited about that. Getting a little bit closer. We got the eclipse tomorrow, baby. The lunar, solar, I don't know which one it is, but. The eclipse is coming through Dallas, Texas, so kids are out of school tomorrow, man. So I just want to have a good, chill, fun show with you before this uh, once-in-a-generation opportunity. How you doing tonight, my friend? I'm very well. You stole my thunder. I was going to say Mm. that we are 18 days away from the NFL draft, but we are 20 hours away from the eclipse. And both you and I just are lucky enough to literally live in the path of where yes. it is chaos. And I didn't even realize schools are closed. Businesses are closed. I've been told not to travel on the main highway. Yep. That's basically, you know, I, I live a little bit out in the country. You got to go on this road to literally get anywhere. And they're like, yeah, don't try to go there between, you know, two and four tomorrow. And uh, yeah, so I'm kind of excited to see what that's all about. Um, something that not everybody, uh, most people will not experience in their lifetimes, but uh here to talk about trade psychology. If we make it till two weekends from now when our next destination chill will be, uh, means we survive the eclipse of 2024. So I'm doing well, my friend. Looking forward to this show. Yeah, I heard some wild things about this eclipse, man. It's like Y2K level conspiracy. Scott, we are old enough to remember like living through Y2K, the countdown from 99 to 2000. And the, the, it was going to be like Terminator, T-1000s everywhere. Bank accounts were going to mess up. Some wild theories out there about this old eclipse and black holes and some other wild shit. But yes, we got to talk fantasy football and more so the trade, some trade advice, strategies and tips, especially at this point in the process. Scott, being so close to the draft, you're seeing a bunch of different things come out. Certain teams 100 percent guaranteed taking this player, other players with character concerns. And you got a lot of people talking about cutoff points in the 24 NFL draft class. I don't want nothing after 108, 109. Trade, 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 trade Rasheed Rice, trade this player, trade Justin Fields. We always talk about for what? Who are you trading them for? You can't just throw out trade this player without giving some actual context behind what you would try to get in return, how you would try to make that move. But a lot of the things that we see are like, oh, trade Fields for a first. Trade Rasheed Rice for a second. Fantasy gamers are sharpening up. Dynasty managers are starting to get a lot smarter and sharper and accepting these one-sided deals where they know they're giving up the leverage. So I've I've, I've challenged people in our Discord and the community, you got to get a little creative when you're trying to move some of these, I'm going to call them, I don't want to call them dead assets, but volatile assets or picks and ranges that you don't really want. So just as we get into it and start to give examples, Scott, can you just talk about through your experience and watching sort of this shift where people are sharpening up in Dynasty Leagues and not accepting these type of deals, How has that made it easier or more difficult for people to manage and navigate that in leagues? Well, I mean, I think the first thing is more people are coming into Dynasty. They're newer players, but they're not the same type of players that would have come into the leagues even five years ago. They're players that are already coming from, a lot of them are probably coming from underdog. A lot of them are coming from places where they're a little sharper than your casual, hey, let's all get together and try a Dynasty league. I mean, you don't know how many people come to me and say, oh, this is my first year in Dynasty. I converted my home league into a Dynasty league, or I took everybody from my home league and we started a Dynasty league because that's everything that's popular now. But nobody knows how to react. Nobody knows what a draft looks like. Nobody knows what a draft pick is lo- is like. And so when you find yourself in one of those situations, it's the wild, wild west early on. Everybody's probably being real apprehensive to make a move. Nobody really will tell you what something is valued as. It's just, I'm scared to make the first big move, right? But then you have another sector of dynasty managers that are coming in and it's don't care about the draft picks. 
give me everything right now. It's reactionary. It's what is going on today on April 7th. Nothing else matters. Not even thinking that far into the future. It's let's get it done today. So trying to reconcile what your league is between those two and just the mixture of a bunch of leagues that I'm in that have just started. Ray, I have a bunch of leagues that have been around five plus years. They're totally different. I know which ones I can go throw a shit player on the block and might get an offer. I know the other ones where if I go and put Sean Tucker on the block, Tank Bigsby on the block, they're going to go, okay, yeah. I'm, sure, I'll take him for free, but I'm not giving you anything. So if my motivation is to make a move in one of those leagues, you do have to be creative. And I think you have narratives out there now of, you know, everyone's so sure about what's going to happen in this class and what these picks are worth. And yet you go to your league and you'll go, man, I don't know. I don't know what these picks are worth when I go and shop them in my league because they're sharp. Someone sent me an offer today. They send me an offer of the 111 for my Devontae Smith. Right. That's a deal in some leagues. Someone would go, man, Devontae Smith doesn't have much upside, Ray. We could go through a mock right now, and you could probably sell me on how the player at 111 has more hopium slash future possible value or flexibility, right? Could be a quarterback, yep. could be a running back, could be a receiver, but I'm giving you Devontae Smith, who's just a steadfast wide receiver 15. Maybe he gets to wide receiver 10 in a great year, but he probably is what he is. So how do you value that? How do you get that read in your league? And then also when you identify that you want to make something done or want to make something happen, how do you go about finding a balance yes. between, hey, I want to trade with I want to trade with Ray. I know mm -hmm. Ray doesn't really want what I have, but Ray's somebody that will always make a deal. He's just looking for a good deal. You know, you'll be flexible. You may not be totally anti certain types of assets. You may not pay what I want, but I have to try to find a way to make you see it from my perspective, but also make it so it's a mutual benefit for both of us. I think that's what we want to talk through today is just some examples of that. Yeah, man. And I'm as you're talking through this, I, I want I want to start this thing off with some live grenades. I want some nasty, dirty examples of players that we all probably let's let's just say, even though there could be a, a world in which this player's opportunity increases this year and he actually comes through and performs for us. But just based on how the community feels about this player in particular, Scott, and sort of the new look outlook of this offense. I just want to talk through Quentin Johnston for a second. So we're going to use Quentin Johnston as the live living grenade. Just example of some things, or at least how my brain goes through how I would try to move him. So I'm just going to ask the chat. This is going to be an interactive show tonight. Let me know what y'all want for Quentin Johnston. What, do you, what is it that you want? Scott, if you got QJ in the league, what is it that you want for QJ? Just, just give me something. You want to, what pick? range would you want for Quentin Johnston? QJ, what pick you want, if you can get out of him. Just, you're not trying to bake in what he could become in six months. Just, you want out on QJ, what are you willing to accept right now? Ideally, I would probably look for anything that has a second in front of it, but I know I'm probably not getting that this year nor next year. So can I take advantage of somebody that's willing to trade one from two years out? Can I get mm -hmm. that? If I can't do that, can I give you Something that I know, and I think this is a, a real key thing we're going to talk about with draft picks. Yes. Can I give you a pick that you would never give me a future second for? But can I throw QJ in and package them together? Can I make it seem like you're getting the leverage? You already threw that word out there, so I'll continue with it. Can I give you the 303 and Quentin Johnston and get a 25 second? Right? The 303 is a pick probably on the clock. It's going to be either valuable to somebody who wants a certain player or it's going to be, I'm forced to make the pick. Especially if you don't have time to sit there league after league after league and grind. I mean, how many times are you able to sit there on the clock for two hours and grind those trades for those thirds, Ray? Or do you just go, right. hey, Ray, Ray G's on the clock. Go hit draft. You know what I mean? We, right. we sit there right. and say, oh, yeah, maximize the value of those picks until you're in 24 drafts and you're going, oh, man. I'm going to have a lot of picks. I don't have time to maximize those. So can I take one of those picks? And for me, as somebody that's in almost 50 leagues, that saves me time. That's a pick I don't have to worry about getting pinged on the clock on a random Wednesday at 3 o'clock when I'm doing other things. I can alleviate and kill two birds with one stone by moving that 303 and QJ. Can I get a future second? 
And okay. I think that the okay. optics of that right. makes the other person think, okay, I got a decent deal with some upside. So that would be a good example of what I'd look for if I can't get a second straight up. Well, well, let, well let's talk about that right there. What you just said, because most people, I, I can, I'm looking at the chat, I'm reading like 212, 301, any second, early third, Zach Moss, sort of the equivalent of a second round pick. No doubt about it. You get an inbox offer and then you are receiving a second round pick for your QJ. I don't care if it's start nine, start 10, super flex, single quarterback, tight end premium. Everybody is smashing except on that. But the likelihood that that offer is going to find you probably slim to none outside of the season starting and him smashing. So when I sit back and people ask me, Ray, I'm, I'm trying to move Quentin Johnston. I'm trying to move Marvin Mims. I'm trying to move another asset that we feel is a crashing stock but nobody will accept it. I think for a lot of times, people are like, that's what I want. I want the second. I want that 301. And if that offer doesn't come, I think what, what I'm okay with and what I've found very successful is you've got to give, it, it, it's a negotiation that's going on in a trade, right? Scott, we're talking about the art of getting a deal done. This is a micro transaction amongst of other a, a, a litany of other transactions involving the same player. So everybody's got this want for something, but you also have to, you have to understand that sometimes in order to get off of the thing you think is an active living grenade, you know, this could be it for QJ. He goes out there and he face plants early in the season. The value's done. Put him in the same camp as Josh Doxton, Jalen Rager, any failed wide receiver of the past. So for me, what's your motivation? Is the motivation getting a second round pick or are you more motivated to get off of this player? And if you're motivated to get off the player, then for me, it's okay if I've got to pay you 105 to make the dollar, right? I've got to give you five, I got to give you 10 cents more just to get off of that one thing. I'm okay with losing the deal. So what I want to show you are a couple of deals. Cause what if I told you, Scott, you can get that second round pick and you can get a 24 second and Calvin Ridley for your QJ. Would you be interested in that? I mean, come on. Would, just, just, yes, right? Just, this is come a on, come on. Would you be interested? But yes. you would have to give up your Amari Cooper and I'll kick back a Darius Slayton in return. You know, that, it, that's what I'm, right? If you are motivated to get off of them, that is a way. If I told you you can get off of QJ and get a second round pick in 24 and Calvin Ridley, but you've got to pay an Amari Cooper. Like that, these are how things get done. So I'm going to pull up some trades that have happened in various leagues over the past couple of days. So let's just take a look at some QJ deals and let's talk through the psychology of offering these in order to move off of an asset that you don't want, Scott. So keep, keep that framework of the conversation in mind as we take a look at some of these QJ deals that have transpired over the past couple of days. So let's just start right here at the top. Got Quentin Johnston, Tony Pollard, and a 2025 third round pick. Other side getting two seconds, one in 25 and one in 2024. The one that I just talked about, you see a couple of a uh, couple of trades down, QJ and Amari Cooper for a 24 second, Calvin Ridley and Darius Slayton. And the one right above that, Quentin Johnston and Kyler Murray for Jordan Love in a 26 second. There, there are ways, but I think most of the times, and you do a you do a really good job of this, Scott, especially when you're talking about leagues where some teams have three stud quarterbacks. They want to, you want to sell the shitty one. You don't want to sell your Jalen Hurts or your Lamar Jackson. You want to get rid of QB3 Will Levis. You're trying to dump, you, you want to dump Brock Purdy. But what you may have to stretch your mind to is maybe I can roll with Purdy and then double up on value with the Jalen Hurts, with the Lamar Jackson, right? So just in talking about getting off of a live asset, talk about even some of these deals we see for QJ paying a little bit in order to move off of the thing that you that you want to get off of, right? Yeah, and I think the the first thing to mention is that we're to you look at most of these deals. I mean, sure, there's a couple in here where it's just QJ, 26 right. second. QJ, 24 second. We're assuming that when you're trying to move somebody like QJ, you've already gone through and put it in the chat. Hey, any second in the next three years gets yes. him. Nobody sent it to you. You've spammed it nobody's accepted it. So you've exhausted those efforts to get the price that you want. Uh, here's a very common mistake that people make. They look up on keep trade cut or whatever trade calculator they use and they go, okay, Quentin Johnston, this is his value. 
you go on KTC, it's a late second. It's a mid 26 second. When you can't get that, what do people do, Ray? I'm a hold. I'm a hold. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Let's hold him and let's hold him for now. If you tell me I'm going to hold him because I think he's going to start off the season gangbusters and then I'm willing to take the second. Okay. I can, I can buy that process. What a lot of people will do though, is they go, I can't get the second. Nobody in my league will pay a second. I'm going to hold. Then you go, well, why are you holding? Well, because no one will pay me what I want. Yes. You know, this isn't your house. This isn't your house that should kind of keep its value over a little bit of a longer period of time. This is a player where anything negative, they draft a receiver, he's down. He doesn't smash in the preseason, he's down. There's more down. rumblings about the Chargers, aren't going to pass, he's down. He starts off the season, two catches in week one, he's down. There's a lot more pass to where he's down versus... Man, I'm going to really be able to sell him for two seconds if this happens. Because we know, Ray, this is a player people don't like already. They already don't want him. They already don't like him. It'll take a lot more for him to be worth two seconds than Jackson Smith and Jigba. You know, it, it'll just take more. We already know that. So the mistake people make is I'm going to hold. Then they hold. Then we get to the season, and they still can't sell. And then they're willing just to take a third when... The alternative is to do what you said. Look at some of these deals. I mean, that go up to that Jordan Love, well, Kyler Murray one. Well, I'll go to that one, but somebody in the chat directly talked about the CJ Stroud, Anthony Richardson one, and then we'll move back up to the Love Kyler yes. one. So, and and just for the just for option for completeness here, this is a super flex ten team start ten in the trade where CJ Stroud and Anthony Richardson were exchanged. Talk about that. Well, I mean, the form of that deal is basically all right. I probably value Stroud over Richardson. The market values Stroud over Richardson. Correct. But, man, I'm able to get the tax on top of Richardson for Stroud. I'm getting Christian Watson, right? So, okay, it's not probably a worth a first, but it's a piece. But I'm also getting the QJ for the second, which is the deal I sought out in the first place. So you look at Correct. it like I'm willing to accept the loss Potential loss. We're talking hypothetical ADV value loss. You're probably looking at Shroud and Richardson going, all right, can I stomach move him from one to the other? But man, the other two pieces in that deal are enticing. And, and that's what a lot of these deals look like. The Cooper for Ridley that you already talked about. Maybe I like Cooper better than Ridley. Right. But I'm willing to swap out 29-year-old receivers with probably similar ranges of outcomes to accomplish what I want. And I think a lot of people don't get there. They don't start looking at players on their team that are neutral pivots that maybe they take a little bit of a loss. We see it with running backs a lot. Yep. Oh, man, I got to have that running back. Okay, you're willing to give me this other running back? I mean, especially when you're talking about the position being like a one- to two-year bet, who cares if you dump Tony Pollard for a second? You could replace Tony Pollard with a second, but the goal there is you got the second for Quentin Johnston. You know, it's it's accomplishing what you want, but you do have to be creative. And sometimes, like you always say, you have to give up maybe the piece in the deal that you almost look at, like C.J. Stroud or Kyler Murray, untouchable. Can't move them. And you're willing to just test the other person. Because honestly, you're just testing the other person to see where they kind of value the tiers. You've exposed them. Oh, man, they value Kyler Murray way more than Jordan Love. So they're willing to concede the QJ for the second. Yet I look at Kyler Murray and Jordan Love, and I'm going, give me either one. They're the same either to me. Or. Yep. So there you go. I, a lot of the deals look like that, and it's very common. If you pull up deals where you're trading away mundane players, players that aren't even worth a second, a lot of them look like exactly what you're seeing on your screen. So it's a savvy way to get deals done when you're trying to move something and you got to hide it. And and that's sort of and it's and that's what we talk about is I want to call it like Trojan horsing the player. But if you're trying to move off of and we can transition this to the 2024 rookie class, Scott, because right now the talk is, you know, anything after 108, 109, you really don't want those picks. Try to trade out of the back of the first. Get out of that 110 move back to the late second and take a shot at Javon Baker instead of reaching for Adnan Mitchell or Lad McConkey. But what are you moving the 110 for? Uh, ideally, we would love to move that for 25 first. But again, I I'm giving the Dynasty Gamer more credit today that they are sharper than I'm not, I'm not trading 
what could be who knows what in 25 for your 110, and I know what that is today. So you see a lot of people saying, I can't move it. I can't move the 110. I can't move the 111. I cannot move the 112. I've got to make the pick. Again, Scott, I go back to the question I asked you before we even got into QJ. What's your motivation? Is your motivation trying to accrue a certain value level or is the motivation moving the pick? Because I, I, I beg to differ that you can't move the 110 or 111, but it may not net the type of return that you wanted going into the negotiation, but is it worth it, man? That's, that's really the, is it worth losing 10 cents on that dollar in order just to get out? Like, is it, is it really worth that or should I just make the damn pick? Well, let me ask you it in reverse as somebody that is receiving the offer. Let's okay. say, because that is a very plus EV move. If you can move a 110, 111, 112 for a future first where you look at the manager and you look at the team and you go, Ugh, you know what? Right. I, I'm, I'm willing to bet against that team being a playoff team. We all know who they are in your league. That manager that maybe misses some waivers, isn't that active, probably isn't going to maximize their roster construction. You're willing to go, you know what? I'm going to bet on that being a better pick next year than what I'm currently sitting on. So you're able to re-roll that 110. Now, normally that person, and this is where I think the sharper dynasty managers are starting to figure things out. Normally that person, what, what do you say when you get an offer of the 110 for your 25 first, right? What's the first thing you do as the receiving manager there? You're probably thinking about, man, how good is my team, right? Mm -hmm. How good is that one oh? How good is that one ten relative to my roster? If it's the team you just blew up last week, that's probably why you're getting the offer, right? The person says, "Oh man, Ray's team sucks. Let's see if he'll he'll send me that future first for that one ten. So the optics. What are the optics of that deal when you get that trade? You know exactly what they're trying to do, right? You know they're scared they're of picking that one ten. They don't. They want to get out of that one ten. They don't like what it looks like they're going to be able to get. So they're trying to get your first and they've probably vetted your first a couple with a couple other teams and sent that same offer to one or two other teams in the same spot. Can I get out for that pick? So, so how do you counter if you're on the other side and you ask them, what's your motivation here? Now I'm going to switch roles. You're the sender. Will you just tell that person straight up? My goal is trying to get out of this 110 for your 25 first. And let them acknowledge that maybe that 110 isn't as valuable as their first, but let them maybe find a creative way to go, okay, Ray, will you toss in that Roshan Johnson? Now, you probably no. wouldn't even have thought Roshan no. Johnson would have been enough, but will you let them come back to you? Do, do you do you tell them exactly what your motivation is, or do you, do, nah, do you go to look for another offer to send? If I'm trying to move the 110 and... I've got a piece like Roshan Johnson on my team. I'll send it in the first. I'll send it off a rep. I'm look. I'm here's my thing. I know that if I come to you for if I have the 110 and I send that to you for your 25 first, it's an auto decline. I, I just I, I'm going to make the same assumption that you're probably thinking, thinking the same thing that I am, that I, I'm not paying this 25 first for this 110. So what I'm doing off the rip, dude, is I'm sending you, I'm not sending you just Roshan Johnson. I'm going to give you a slice of that Marvin Mims with that 110 at, while, while I'm at it. I'm using that same youthful philosophy with hopeful magic being upside here in 2024. And I'm sending you both of those guys and the 110 for that 25 first and a third round pick in 2024. Just give me that three that 308. I, I want you to feel so good about the offer that you're getting for players that I really don't give a shit about that there's little negotiation back and forth. I'm looking at some picks right now for the 110. Scott, in a super flex 12-team PPR league, pretty standard stuff. You can move your 110. And let's just assume all the other stuff, you need a quarterback, whatever, maybe you don't. But you've got a chance to acquire Jordan Love. And what you must give up, Scott Connor, is that 110, Josh Jacobs and Russell Wilson. Would you do that deal? Is that a deal that you would entertain? Moving those, letting that go for Jordan Love. Because for me, it's a no-brainer. Give me Jordan Love. Even if that was all I got back, you throw in a third. Sure, I'd ask for the 311 because that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask for the 311 back. I'll ask for a 25 third with that Jordan Love. But these are the type of things that you see. And I'm pulling up a real deal 
these are, these are trades that have been accomplished for the 110 over the past couple of days. Now, you don't see a ton of them one for one, but the ones that you do, they're, they're pretty good players. Like in what world would I rather have the 110 over Devon Achan? Hell, Nico in what world Collins would someone give me the 105 and Isaiah Pacheco for the 110? What is that? that that's got to be that, a typo. That, that's got to Don't ask me, man. I don't know, but there's a lot of value going the other way. But skip oh, that. Man. But the point is, look at this, man. T. Higgins. Now, I don't know if I'd want T. Higgins that damn bad, but there are ways to package up pieces to move off of the thing. And again, I think regardless of what the compensation is, I think the most important part is what is your motivation? What's your motivation? Is your motivation to get max value for Austin Eckler? Or is your motivation just to get the hell off of this and get anything that I can get? I just want something before it goes to nothing. If you've got that belief, and I'm not saying Austin Eckler is going to go to zero, but what's your motivation? Do you really want to trade off of the 110? Do you want to move? People say they can't move the one-on-one. Bullshit. You can. I guarantee you there are ways that you could package up assets that you have in order to move that pick and probably get a haul in return. But it's truly thinking, I think it's outside of the box. And so many times, you know who we don't want to give up, Scott? Oh, man, I just, I can't move Jaden Reed. Oh, young, I, I can't move him. You know, I don't want to give up Jaden Reed. You know, Tank Dell, I can't move Tank Dell. Don't want to move Devon A. Chan. And I think that barrier right there, having that blockade for players that you don't want to move, it, it just kind of limits the opportunity that you have to find a partner to get a deal done. Yeah, I think the main motivation here is you come into the deal with a with an idea You've gone through, if you've looked at your picks, you've looked at your roster, you've gone, I have that 110. Now, is right now the best time to move the 110? Maybe, maybe not. I think it's hit or miss. You can argue there's going to be a better window. You can also argue, you know, I don't agree with the best time to move picks is on the clock. The best time to move either. some picks is on the clock. Other picks, when everybody already knows what they are, you can't get anything. You would have been better moving it in March because it's still an ambiguous tier that people aren't sure of. For me, Ray, the goal... When I go through, because I have a large number of teams, I track all my picks, I don't have time to really grind one league more than maybe 10, 15 right. minutes at a time. So I'll go through and I go, all right, I have the 110. Let me see what I can get done. And sometimes it'll be based on, okay, how many how many of these damn picks do I have at 110? I mean, this year, I'm just looking. I have seven 110s this year. So I should literally be looking at that list for some ideas of ways I can dump some 110s because I certainly don't want to make all seven of those picks, but I probably should be focused on, I want to get the other manager to somehow, when we leave the interaction, to also be interested in doing a deal involving the 110. What does that look right. like? Let, let them decline the first deal. I mean, a lot of those deals on there, Rasheed Rice for the 110, Jaden Reed for the 110, you and I are going to decline a deal on either side of that, unless it's just like, all right, I'll take it. But most of the time, if you send me a one-for-one, one, the optics of that are just likely not going to get done unless the other person, they want heads and you want tails. And sometimes those work, but a lot of times they don't, especially if you have people that are going, oh, I know exactly what Scott's trying to do by sending me this 110. I'm not going to bail him out. So I think it's getting the other manager to almost tell you what they're willing to do. Even if the deal doesn't work out, there's nothing better than them coming back to you going, Ah, maybe if you add that Tank Bigsby and maybe a future third, I'll be willing to send that 25 first with that 110. And then right there, you've got them. Now you have to be willing to do it if you didn't already send the original offer, but you won the deal because now you know where they stand on that price. And you now can choose to accept it or decline it. And the whole thing was your idea to begin with. I I've now put it in their head that they can get the 110 and maybe they can get a little bit of a discount. It's like draping that 15% off coupon in the mail. You may have never been willing to go to that store until you get that coupon. Now, ah, we got to check that store out, man. We got to see what they have because I got this coupon. Now, I know we got to spend 100 bucks, but hey, you know, we'll get $100 worth of stuff for 85 bucks if we go there. But you would have never gone to that store in the first place. No one would have sent you an offer for that pick or that asset. So I think it's leaving the trade negotiations with that 
in mind. And if you get that result, you're going to be a successful trader. All right. We got a challenge, Scott. There was a, there was a name that was invoked in the chat. And I think this is a great exercise, right? So I, I wish we had a hypothetical team, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to control it on the back end and you're going to imagine this is sort of your team. And would you be willing or comfortable, Scott, based on points per game, war, whatever you want, would you be comfortable moving these assets in a deal to get rid of this player? And the player name that was invoked, Scott, and I got to get time, I got to get the timestamp. I'm timestamping this because the people hate when we don't freaking do it. Traylon Burks. Traylon Burks is the name that was invoked in the chat. Now, Scott, if I just ask you right now, you try to move Traylon Burks, or you put, here's what people do. They go put Traylon on the block in their league, right? Traylon Burks on the block. Oh, yeah, that's that's really going to get the juices going from your league, mate. You throw that Burks on the block, people are coming. People come looking. But here's the thing, Scott. You do that, I, I think it almost hurts you as the fa as the dynasty manager more more than it than it helps gauge enthusiasm and interest because now people know unequivocally you want to get rid of this player. You randomly on a Tuesday, ain't shit going on in the chat. Puka Nakua hit the block. Garrett Wilson hit the block, and you throw Traylon Burks up. Like people know you want out of that asset. Instead, if I just told you, Scott, you know what? There there is a world, Scott where you can get a 24 second, a 20, 24 second round pick for your Traylon Burks in a 12 team PPR half point tight end premium start nine. You can get a 24 second, but Scott Connor, you've got to give up Curtis Samuel and Khalil Shakir on top of that Burks. And all you get back is a 24 second. Are you doing something like that? Yeah, yes. I mean, that's a no brainer because you're getting rid of the three. No brainer fringy slash roster clogger mm -hmm. receivers. And the big thing is you're getting back two free roster spots as well, which is huge because now you're going, man, I got that cluster of cloggers slash don't know what I can do with them. They're off my team. They're somebody else's problem alone. That's worse. So it. we start low, right? I start the threshold low and we work our way up to see where your comfort and tolerance level is. Scott, now, instead of giving up Traylon Burks, Scott, you've got to give up Traylon Burks and Jonathan Taylor. And you have to give up a 2026 third round pick. Right off the rip, most people are probably like, I ah, really, I'm not, ugh, JT. But in return, you get back Zeke Elliott. <laughs> you get back a 24 third. And you get back a 24 first round pick for your troubles of Jonathan Taylor. In a super flex 12 team start 10. Right? Did you really want to give up Jonathan Taylor on that deal? Probably not. But again, what's your motivation? You're getting a first round pick, call it however you want for Jonathan Taylor. You're getting a third and Ezekiel Elliott. And I would assume Zeke, at, given this format where you got to start 10, if he lands a job and he has to start for a week, that's a third, it's another third rounder you can turn him to in your league, right? I'm just going through some examples, right? In a half point tight end premium, Scott, where the tight end matters just a tad bit, 1.5, you can move your Traylon Burks and get a 24, a 25 second, not 24, Scott. 25 second, but you got to give up that Kate Otten on top of Traylon Burks. Most people, hell no, I ain't doing that. That's that's not enough to move off of Kate Otten in a 1.5 tight end premium. So again, there are ways, but do you want to stretch the comfort zone of what you originally wanted to pay in order to get the deal done? So I'm going to pull them up, but just talk through some of those different examples of packaging up good and hopeful players to move off of the asset that you really want to move off of. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned it at the beginning of the show where you're paying hotter dollar five dollar 10 on the dollar to get rid of a piece where, and, and I think it's, you're not really paying overpaying or paying the dollar five or dollar 10 on the dollar to get rid of the piece. Because at this point, I mean, look at some of these deals, my goodness, trail on Burks for a fourth for a fourth. Yep. 26 third. I mean, when you pull, there's a reason that we have access to these trade calculators and trade finders. He's not worth anything. He's Correct. worth more off your team than he is on your team because he's occupying Correct. a roster spot. This is 28 man rosters. Give me that extra spot to churn and burn three or four times during the preseason and during the season. Than having Traylon Burks on my roster to begin with, especially if you're in a lineup league, probably a lot of these are lineup leagues. He's even yes. more worthless, right? He's not even, he's not even a guy that could have one or two good games where best ball, you could justify rostering him, but a lineup league, you're going, what do I do with him? 
So it 100% is not understanding that a trade calculator is not calculating. A, I want him gone. There's value in, I'm just sick of looking at him on my team. You know, now does that ha really have any value? No, but to you, if you're just sick of worrying about what's going to happen with him and he's not on your roster, so he's not an eyesore anymore, that's worth something. The free roster spot, worth something else. Those two things make up for that five, 10 cents that I'm quote unquote losing in the trade. Did I really want to move Jonathan Taylor straight up for a random first? That probably wasn't what I woke up that morning and said, I'm right. going to try to do. But I took the quote unquote loss there because maybe Taylor's worth a first and a third or whatever. But I used it as a way to get rid of what I actually wanted to get rid of. And I think too many managers just do exactly what you said. They get stuck in the. I'm trying to jam a square peg into a round hole. Nobody will trade for Burks, especially in smart leagues. Why would anyone want Why would Burks anyone? on their team? Nobody Why would does. anyone want him? So it's, the Taylor uh, team didn't want Burks. I guarantee you, the JT team correct. didn't want Burks, but that was the tax in order to take. That was the tax you had to pay in order to take on Taylor. Last one for Trey Long, but I, this one will really push people's process here. Look at this one right here, Scott Puka Nakua. And Traylon Burks for Antonio Gibson, Brandon Ayuk, and a first. Come on, man. No, no, it ain't come on. Because I, th what side would you want, Scott? I mean, you're getting Ayuk and a first for Puka Nakua, and then you're I getting there are Antonio like, Gibson That's not for enough. Traylon I guarantee Burks. there are people that say that ain't even enough. I'm not. Nah. Brandon Ayuk can get traded. Brock, they don't throw enough in San Francisco. Puka Nakua is a stud. You heard, what, you heard what Aaron Donald said about him yesterday, that he can do things never done in the NFL. They aren't bringing in any receivers. They're building around Puka. I don't know about Ayuk. Gibson, I don't care about. You're, he's worth more than Ayuk in a first. For me, I want Ayuk in a first. It's easy. It's that. But are you, is your brain wired enough to think, hmm, I'm looking at my roster, right? I got Puka. I got CD. My receiver room is, my receiver room is nice. I'm not looking to move Puka Nakua. That's not on the brain. I'm trying to move Trey Long. But you find a manager that may like that Rams wide receiver a hell of a lot more than Brandon Ayuk. Are you cool? Are you? People talk it. I'm comfortable moving anybody. But then you start to see Trey. Well, why did you? Why would you not offer this? Have you not thought about moving that player instead of this? I, these are easy ways to move cloggers off your team. If you're comfortable with taking a tear down for whatever that's worth, and acquiring some, if you're comfortable with doing that, I can almost guarantee you there is not a player in Dynasty that you cannot trade. Guarantee you. Now, sure, Corey Davis, J like those guys, like, yes, no one wants them. Like, people are like, dude, I don't, but there's not a player you can't move. Quentin Johnston, Marvin Mims, wh whomever it is. And you probably can even get back a little more in return than you thought. Just may have to stretch your way of thinking a little bit, Scott. Well, and there's a deal on there. We can't see what the picks they are for 2024. But that top deal, this is another one that I think before the rookie picks get made, this is a key one that I've been looking and trying to figure out if I can get some deals done where, let's say, Ray, that is the 110 and the, we'll say that's the 110 and the 203 with Burks. Okay? Which, one, which one are you talking about? This one at the, the top? The top. The top deal. So it says Burks, a 24 first yes. and second for a 24 mm -hmm. first and second. So the, the people are probably looking at that going, well, that's a free Burks. But those are actually going to be numbered picks. We can't see what they are. But that, let's just say I'm giving you the 110, the 203, and Burks. You're giving me the 109, the 207, straight up. Right now, I, it looks like you're going to look at that deal and go, all right, I'm getting Burks for free. I'm going from the 109 to the 110. A lot of people will sniff that and go, ah, that's not that big of a difference. And I'm giving you four slots in the second round. And what was your goal? To get rid of Traylon Burks. And yeah, you had to move down those four slots from the 203 the to the 207. But you moved up. Uh, you also got a bonus of now I have the 109. And you know what the 109 can be? That's a ticks closer to the 107. 
the 106. You never know if there's another deal on the table. So finding creative ways like that, especially, I mean, really, if you're moving, let's say that was the 201 for the 210. Oh, man, I can't give up nine slots in the second round. But again, you got moved up in the first, but you also got rid of Traylon Burks for some sort of value. You didn't get a third. You didn't get a fourth, but you got some sort of value, which was Correct. your goal going in. So I think looking at rookie picks, hell, we don't know what these tiers are going to look like, especially if you're dealing with – I've had some success this week moving some some seconds that I deem to be – man, right? do I need nine copies of the 209? You know? <laughs> I look at – why do I yeah. have nine 209s? Yeah. So is there a way I can move some 209s for – extra value in the future i send them for a 25 second ah man i don't know about that a lot of people don't don't accept the future second they don't want to give up a future second for a 209 because it's too late ah man i don't know what's going to be there at the 209 maybe on the clock but you got to add something in a tight end pivot i made two pivots this week pat fryermuth from cole Komet, jake ferguson to pat fryermuth i'm getting fryermuth in both all I had to give up is Jake Ferguson and Cole Komet. KTC rankings has those guys higher. But I was able to get off late seconds for future seconds, and I don't have to worry about that 212, 211, 210 on the clock. I've already gotten the future second. And all I did was tear off of a tight end for a tight end. It doesn't change my roster construction. I'm fine throwing Pat Fryermuth in the same spot I was sending Cole Komet in. But I was able to mask it. That other person probably looked at it and go, man, Komet's actually good. Fryer moves not. And I go, okay, well, you gave me the, the future second for the 211. So that kind of deal kind of hid the value in the deal. I don't care about the tight end, but I guarantee that other manager had Fryer Muth a tier below Cole Komet. They thought they're getting the steal. And they justified it in their head. Man, I'm, I'm giving up a future second, and I'm still getting back a second. And I'm getting the better play. And it works for both of us. May not end up working for me, but it accomplished what I wanted was to get rid of that 211 for a future second, which people were not doing when I was just spamming it out. All right, Scott, let's go to chat real quick. Nick Eve hit us with a super chat right at the start. Let's talk through some trades real quick. And then while we're doing this, everybody in the chat, first and foremost, hit the damn thumbs up button. Y'all know better. Y'all got to do that, man. Hit this thumbs up button, like the content. And then be thinking about some players that you guys are trying to move from uh, for, whether they're older players, uh, second-year players that either you're trying to trade into the 24 class or maybe there's some picks that you're having some trouble getting out of. Give Scott and I some... Maybe we can help you this evening. Give us something that you've been struggling with. There's a player that you've been struggling to move. You want him off your roster. Scott, let's see if we can help some people out tonight, man. A little different. But we're chilling tonight, baby. The NFL draft is right around the goddamn corner. We're having fun tonight. So Nick Eve hit us with one right here, Scott. What is this, 12-team? Superflex start nine, half point PPR 1.0, tight end premium. Kyler, any QB on a, any QB, uh, QB on a two deep. We know how you do that, Scott. Pollard, Kamara, Moss, Gibson, any RB on a 53. Looks like he's got CD, Diggs, London, Laporta. 101, 102, 04, 06, and 325 firsts. Bunch of seconds and thirds. What's the question? What was the question that? Nick, come back in. What if he had a second part? He had a a a, second part that he didn't throw in there. I think there's a second part right there. So, Nick, come back in. Let us know. But we have one from Top Miami right here, Scott. Here goes Top Miami. Shout out. Appreciate you, man. Would you trade your 24, 106, 111, 112 for Christian McCaffrey? 12 team, 1 QB, full PPR, start three wide receiver league. Also has the 101 and 102. Was just the worst team. Would you do that, Scott? Back in first and the 106 in a single QB start three wide receiver league. Also is the 101 and 102. Well, we don't know how many starters, but it is a one QB. You're getting rid of, I mean, God, we don't even love uh, the 111, uh, 112 in a yeah. super flex, let alone a one QB. I mean, here, here's what I would say. You have Marv, you have neighbors, and you have CMC. So unless your team is just absolutely awful, if it's a shallow 1QB league, I mean, bro, you're you're 40% of the way there to probably yeah, competing man. if you think you can. Now, the only alternative would be, can I do something else with those picks? That's a good deal for McCaffrey, don't you agree? 
getting him yeah, for basically three uh, randoms. It's a great, great, it's a great deal. Great deal. Great deal for McCaffrey. Can I do something different though? Can I get two future firsts for those picks instead? Teams that I think maybe could be in the top five, top six next year. How the hell did you get the one hundred one or one hundred two? You probably traded for a future pick when somebody's pick thought was going to be much worse than it ended up. So it's an opportunity cost on the trade. It's a good deal for CMC, but could I turn those three picks into a 25 first, a 26 first, and a couple other pieces? You know what I mean? Like something different, but I think he's getting a good deal on the surface though. All right, I got Nick's second part to Nick's question. So let's pull it back up. And basically this is what he was asking. He's got a bunch of stuff, and I'll give you the players if we need them. But he says uh, right here, I know I shouldn't be making all those first round picks this year. What kind of trades should I be making with those picks and still maintain flexibility for the future? Love you guys. So let's pull up his roster one more time. He's got a buttload of picks, 101 damn near through 106, bunch of firsts in 2025 and seconds and thirds. Looks like he's got a decently uh, Kyler, Pollard, Kamara, Moss, Gibby, CD, Diggs, London, Laporta. 12 team super flex I mean, start nine. Man, I mean, Ray, is there? I mean, I'm, I'm always, I'm always good with trying to think about the future. But if there's a class and there's a pick range where I would go, I mean, I just make those four picks. I want him. It's what he's here. got. All he has is Kyler. Yep. This is probably the class to take a shot on at least one QB, right? Yep. And you know, lock in Marv and whoever you want. Lock in Marv and Caleb, and then leave the draft with two more assets, whether it's Bowers, Adunze, McCarthy, you know, Drake Bay, Jaden Daniels. It doesn't matter, but I think this is the last year probably. I I would make those picks. I'd be fine 101, 102, 104, 106, Scott. I'm fine making all six of those picks. If I I can move it, it would have to be something very good and something youthful enough, not because I want to have them for the next 15 years of their career, but I want that flexibility and that liquidity of that. You, I, that's the dynasty game. I I don't want to make a deal and I'm getting back Mike Evans and Deontay Johnson. It would have to be something young. Garrett Wilson, Puka Nakua, one of those kind of players. But uh, Nick, honestly, appreciate the love. Appreciate you watching the show. I'm good with making every one of them picks. I, I, I'm good. If I've got a press, press play on 101, 102, 104, 106, I'm good. Well, and he's already got 325 first. So if it was a team where you said, I got these four picks, but I traded away all my future capital to get them, then I'm like, okay, I've already gotten lucky. I have the 101, I have the 102, and I have two other top six picks. Maybe one of those picks, four or six, you could justify moving for a future first plus. But I think in his case, he's already got three future firsts next year. So you already have the flexibility and the future capital locked down. Like this is the class probably to make those picks and – one of those two at the four or the six misses out. Big deal. You hit on probably three starters out of four picks. I mean, this is the class probably to take those picks in. So don't overthink right. it, Nick. You got this. I'm going to give you some names, and we're going to touch on a few to see just how we would try to move these players. Sean, I love you, but we ain't talking about Jalen Hyatt. I don't want to talk about trying to move Jalen Hyatt. There's not enough ROI on it, that anyway. We so. already talked about him with Marvin Mims, Quentin Johnston, Trey Lombard. Yeah, same, same, with same, those same guys. deal. So do you want to go Jaden Reed, Christian Kirk, or do you want to go like a Camaro Diggs? Do you want to go kind of younger or do you want to go older and talk about creative ways to move those assets? Because this is, I think this is a helpful exercise is helping people construct deals, right? And that's what we, that was the conversation in the discord that night was getting people to think outside the box on how to move some of those assets. So you want to go Jaden Reed, you want to go Christian Kirk. I think Kirk is who he is. Like Kirk is kind of who he is. No one's, no one wants Kirk, so he's always going to be like in a package unless well, somebody's like, yeah, I'll just give you a second for Kirk or two then thirds that's, for Christian Kirk. Then that's the reason I think we go with Christian Kirk. Because okay. I, let's say you have him on a team, right? And I offer you a 25 second and we're both competitive teams. You're probably wow. going to look that offer and say, he's worth more to my team than he is just to take a random second, right? Agreed. You're probably yes. looking for leverage. You're looking for probably two seconds. And I'm going, yep. he ain't worth two seconds. He's not worth yep. the first. He's not worth two seconds. So how do you move a guy like Kirk, DeAndre Hopkins, some of those older receivers that the person that has them probably values them way more for the equity that they're doing for their team? How do you move those guys? Are you willing to move 
Christian Kirk for like a new Hopkins type. And you take the loss, but to you, you're probably going, I'm getting the same production. Is that a way where you'd be willing to to do that to get like a second to third upgrade? Like, is that how you move a guy like Kirk that's in the older, moderately productive receiver range? But like you said, he has really no demand outside of the team that already has him. I, Kirk I in a third or Hopkins in a second? What side would you take? See, you said, what did you say? Kirk in a third or Hopkins in a second? Which side would you take? D -hop you're trading four years of receiver, yeah, but you're it, getting the extra pick. D Hop in the second for yeah. me. It's D Hop in the second. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Uh, but uh, those ones are what I want to stretch is where you're truly comfortable paying to move off. How bad do you want to move off Kirk? And this is what I thought about. This is why, what was the other name that was invoked? We said Christian Kirk or. Um, Another name somebody brought up, Jaden Reed. I think Jayden people Reed. really are trying to move. I don't think I don't think it's this. Okay, that's easy. Like I'll take the second and Hopkins. Would you trade me your Christian Kirk and Aaron Jones for my twenty four second? All you're getting is a second. You got to give me Kirk no. and Aaron Jones. No, because I'd rather have oh. the two players. <laughs> that's okay. the kind of deal I want to use a second to get. Well, you know, Christian Kirk or Rasheed Rice in a twenty five second. You mean Kirk in the second for Rasheed Rice? No, Rasheed Rice got a second was tacked on top of oh, Rice for Christian come Kirk. Come on. That, that, I'm that, just that's one of the people that... The I'm that's someone that believed my 10.8 uh, pounds of weed tweet. As, I saw when you put that out, I was like... <laughs> I knew people were going to believe that Rasheed Rice 10.8 pounds. I, I'm looking at this right now. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. You will get Josh Allen. You'll get Josh Allen, but you've got to give up Christian Kirk, Noah Fant, and CJ Stroud. And you get Josh Allen in a third. Josh Allen in a third for Stroud, Fant, and Kirk. How bad do you really want to move that Kirk? That that's gonna push people. Okay. <clears throat> that's the type of deal I would send. Okay. You could take this, this, and this, and give me Josh Allen in the third. Who's doing that? Yeah. Not a lot of people, but you know what? The person probably didn't go into it thinking they're going to end up trading C.J. Stroud for Josh Allen, but if they wanted to get rid of Christian Kirk, they shot their shot. And if someone actually accepted that, give me the Allen side. And I'm getting a third back. I'm getting a and third you're getting back. Third you're back. you're, and you're you're third who was back. the other piece? You're, you're paying me for whatever that extra Noah piece Fan. was. I, no fan, no fan, no fan okay. Kirk and CJ Stroud for Josh Allen in a third. Okay. Now I'm looking at just some, some Jaden Reed deals. And here's an interesting one because Jaden Reed was in this deal. Uh, Christian Kirk was on the other side of this deal. Super flex, 12 team start 10 PPR 1.0 outside in premium. Chris Olave and Jaden Reed, Christian Kirk, 24 first Baker Mayfield. Ooh. It, it, there's some, what side would you rather I, have? Super flex, 12 teams, start 10. Kirk Baker in the first I, or Chris Olave and Reed? I kind of like the three pieces there because I'm getting three strong enough pieces where I'm willing to give up the best piece in Olave, but then I'm willing to take back the three pieces because I think I could do more with the three pieces. And, and you say that a lot. Man, I can do more with what I'm getting. And a lot of people, I think, just look at it as one side or the other. Ooh, I don't know if Baker's going to finish as a top 20 QB. Cool. It doesn't matter. We're not thinking about it that way. We're thinking about it, okay, once I hit accept, I refresh my app, those pieces are now on my team. What else can I now go do with that Baker Mayfield? I, you know what I bet you I can do? I could turn the Baker Mayfield into a receiver comparable to some of the ones in the deal if I wanted to. Correct. Maybe I could turn Baker into a couple picks. Maybe I could turn him into a running back. Like there's there's options for me, even if he's now my quarterback four. I'd still take that side just because I think there's more I can do with him. Not because it's the better value. Right. There's more right. I can do. Oof, Scott. Here's a good one, man. Here's a good one. Because people seem to want to move uh, move Jaden Reed. And people have also finally come to grips with the fact that Terry McLaurin, while he may be every NFL's receiver's top five. He ain't that for us for fantasy. He has not been that for us. We love Terry McLaurin, but I think people understand that he's probably not an elite 
He is not an elite wide receiver for us from a fantasy perspective, but can't move Terry McLaurin. You want to move McLaurin, you want to move Jaden Reed. You move both of those guys, Scott, and here's what you get back in return. Here's what you get back in return. You do get a 24 first round pick. It's the 112. And you also get David Montgomery. Cross position pick deal. And this is something psychology wise I've talked about. I feel like a lot of people are comfortable. If, if, if I'm sending you two receivers, I'm not even pulling. I don't even want one of your receivers, Scott. I want to make your receiver room stronger. Give me back a pick and a running back that you don't need. Would you take David Montgomery in the 112 to move off of Terry McLaurin, an asset in which neither – he definitely ain't fetch, fetching no 24 first-round pick. It's not happening. And then Jaden Reed for David Montgomery and pray that you can move the running back in a situation. I mean, you're probably at the same value level, if not a little bit lower with Monty, but talk about that deal. So probably the, the way that that deal around went, this. The way that that deal went down is I'm guessing – the 112 was originally for Jaden Reed. And the person selling Jaden Reed is going, I, I need more than the 112, right? So they're willing to kind of accept the other piece as, all right, there's a small piece that I can get that I see as an upgrade. In this case, it's David Montgomery over Terry McLaurin. It's probably a better deal to get the Montgomery over McLaurin side if you're just seeking a running back, right? Like, if you can get anything useful for McLaurin, you're not getting a first, like you said. I'm just trying to think of the psychology of how that deal went down. Team X tries to move Jaden Reed. They send Jaden Reed for a 25 first. I send right. Ray Reed for a 25 first. Ray declines. He's not giving me his 25 first. He knows that running back class next year. He counters. He offers me the 112 for Jaden Reed, right? Mm -hmm. I go, ah, you know, ah, Jaden Reed was a hit. He was a hit. I can't re-roll. I don't want to re-roll. I need some leverage. So I ask you for Montgomery in the 112. You go, nah, that's too much for one receiver like Jaden Reed. Then you're willing to throw in McLaurin. That's probably how that deal got done. It probably wasn't yes. just a two for two right off the rip. No. There was probably no some way. disagreement on the Reed versus the pick, and they settled on a cross-positional deal. So I like that one. Just some... Just interesting structures in order to get stuff done. And that's what I wanted people to think about tonight. Don't tell me that you can't move. You can move. Everybody can be traded. I mean, even, even a Traylon Burks can be moved. But to the original point of this entire conversation, Scott, I think people's motivations are different. You know, I think most of the times people want to win the deal. They want to walk away feeling like they got a treasure trove of shit back, whether that be picks, players, youth value what ADV they want to feel like they truly won some trade calculator it will spit out green on their side red on the other when man the real the real power in moving deadweight assets or assets that you feel are a sinking ship is the freedom and liberation of not having to deal with that asset if it does go to zero you know it, it it's feeling good about Justin Fields and not having to worry about the volatility how your league mates are going to value him moving forward before shit hits the fan. So I just always ask people, what, do you mo what is your motivation? If you're truly trying to move the player, I guarantee if we did roster reviews for everybody in here and they tell us they've got an untradeable player, we can go through, ev I guarantee you, that 100% guarantee, we can structure deals within your rosters that you're holding on to things that you think is probably more valuable than the pr production from a replacement level player that you can go find, whether that be on your own roster, on the, on waivers, or throughout other trades. So uh, that's sort of what I want to leave people with is just think about the motivation. Are you trying to get off the asset or are you just trying to squeeze that, that, that orange for every drop of ju juice that's left inside of it? Yeah, I think the takeaway from today is identifying extrinsic value, your motivation, finding some ways to get the deal done, achieve what you're trying to achieve. There's value in that. We all play Dynasty. I'm a, I am the most process-oriented, robotic Dynasty player that you'll ever meet, but I still feel better if I have a Traylon Burks or a Quentin Johnston, and I really don't want any, and I was able to find a way to move them. I feel better. There's some extrinsic value to It's more enjoyable when I can get that accomplished. Now, what is that worth? What is that worth? Does it score any fantasy points? Not necessarily, but it's a goal. I went into the day, hey, I want to move this Traylon Burks. And I found a way to do it for what I think is some sort of benefit, even if that's just a future roster spot. 
So I think it's identifying extrinsic value that may be hidden in the forms of flexibility or future capital or something that I can use down the road that I don't even know I'm going to be able to use, but I'd rather have that $10 of fab. We haven't even talked about fab, but that's another thing where sometimes you have to take some fab in a deal and you may not value it until there's a player on waivers where everybody wants to bid 60 bucks and now you have an extra 25 laying around. So I think there's that. And then there's also understanding the psychology of the people you're playing with. When they get an offer, what will make them sit there and go, hmm, maybe they don't accept, but maybe they sit there and process it in their head. Okay, I'm going to counter this deal. And what do you get with a counter offer? You get free information. You now have something to go back and go, okay, I'm willing to play ball with what Ray sent me back or I'm not. But free information is better than just a rejection. Nothing's more frustrating than you send offers to people, reject, 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 and you can't figure out what they're trying to do, but they still don't respond. So I think both of those things are super valuable to get deals done. Uh, so that's why I want to leave with everybody today is understanding the value of those things and be the aggressor. Ray and I send 95% of the offers that we get done. Correct. Right. Ray yes. sends them and I send them. We don't wait. We don't wait for the manager to send me that deal where I go, damn, that's exactly the form of trade I was thinking. Perfect. That's not how it works. You got to be the aggressor. The aggressor is usually the one that ends up getting stuff done. That's what it is. That's what it is. Appreciate you people saying they love this show. Appreciate you for that one. And speaking of that, there will be no Destination Chill this coming Sunday. So what is that? April the, what is that? The 14th. 16th, 15th, 14th? 14th. 14th, no Destination Chill. I'll be out on vacation with the family. So we'll be out that Sunday, but we will be back the Sunday before the NFL draft. And I'm sure between now and then there will be a litany of other things that happen in the NFL world because the drama never sleeps. Make sure you're listening to everything that Scott is doing over on Destination Devi, Destination Dynasty on the mornings, Manic and Chill with Shane, Dynasty Trades in 5. They're doing some really cool stuff leading up for the draft, so make sure you're tapped into them. I believe Tuesday nights they stream live. Thursdays as well, right, Scott? You guys do a, a five-minute trade piece on Thursdays with Allen, so make sure you're tapped into that. Trade show with Ty Declare, Off the Line Fantasy with Gene, Overreaction with Chase and Cody, Gene and I going off the line, Gump doing betting stuff. It's just a lot of good things going on at Destination Debbie, and we are excited as hell for the draft stream coming up in April. Make sure you're tapped into that. But y'all have a good week. Make it positive. Make it great. Stay locked in. Stay tapped in. And we'll see y'all two Sundays from now for Destination Chill. We'll see y'all later, man. We out. Peace.